yowzers. Some interesting activity showing up here at the Smash News Network, least busted name in news. We'll take an in-depth look at it. What's that? You want to look even deeper? You want an even closer view than this? Okay. Here's an even closer view. It's 131 angstroms. One of the many ionized iron states covered by the SDO. It looks like a plasma transfer going on there. It's an M-class solar flare. We've got some coronal mass ejections headed toward Earth, most likely. Let's blast through some more information real quick on today's first of a few daily space weather videos. What we're looking at here is multiple wavelengths. This is 335, 193, and 94 angstroms, which are all other ionized iron species. Different numbers of electrons in the electron shells of those iron nucleons emitting ultraviolet light. That's what the SDO is looking at in the AIA wavelengths. Here's ionized helium, 304 angstroms. Coronal mass ejection warning remains in effect, folks. I don't think we've had one in effect for like seven to 10 days as we've had most recently, but here we are. Welcome to cycle 25, a sudden uptick. And if you think it looks like a grand solar minimum, think again, it looks nothing like that. Here's a close up in another ionized iron state, 94 angstroms. One of the best wavelengths with which to view solar flares. So that was an M-class solar flare. It did send some plasma Earth's way. We'll get to it in a later video. The 10.7 centimeter radio flux now at 115 solar flux units. Here it is in context. That black line is the radio flux. The red line below it is the sunspot number. And taking a quick glance at the Space Weather Enthusiast dashboard, no space weather storms forecasted at the moment. The modeling of that coronal mass ejection still not happening. We do have an elevated coronal hole wind stream as well. We'll get to that in a later video. First seismicity. What kind of earthquake activity has been going on? Well, not all that much. Nothing in the six magnitude range. We're going to scroll up the list here. Some activity at Tonga. And by the way, some new interesting data about the size of the ash plume created by the Tongan volcano. We'll get to that next. So a couple of deep quakes here, no large quakes. Nothing above a five point some magnitude quake happening here. I think a 5.4 might be the largest. And let's continue on to talk about Hunga Tonga. Hunga Tonga is an island that has been largely destroyed. This is some imagery of it. If you don't know what it looked like before, I guess it's not going to tell you too much. But here's a great picture of some lightning and the explosion. You can see the clouds pancaking out up here at the top of the range as it pushes higher and higher well into the stratosphere, likely to cause a little bit of global cooling. It's the largest volcano in modern times. Probably a VEI-6, certainly a large VEI-5, I would have to say. Let's see what else is on the list. Subinose Jima is erupting flight level 060, 6,000 foot ash plume from Subinose Jima. The estimated size of that crazy eruption that caused tsunamis all around the Pacific Rim, 128,000 feet. So that is well beyond the level of stratospheric the volcanic aerosols and ash will remain in the stratosphere for years. By the way, volcanic ash and gases, some of the gases at least, like carbonyl sulfide, cause additional cloud nucleation. So you can expect a cloudier planet, a little bit cloudier planet as a result of Hunga Ha'apai. Fuego still uh, exploding in Guatemala. Flight level 150, it's a 15,000 foot ash plume from Fuego. Nevado del Ruiz, 19,000 foot ash plume as it explodes. 
Nevado del Ruiz is a Colombian volcano. Ecuador has two currently exploding, Sangay and Revenador. Sangay, 15, uh, 23,000 foot ash plume. Revenador, 15,000 foot ash plume. Saban Kaya, intermittent emissions are a reminder not to pole vault the Peruvian volcano. This is a reminder to visit our websites and welcome to the Neo Renaissance. Congratulations on realizing our channel exists. Please support the channel by becoming a member of the, a member of the Smash team or maybe be picking up some Smash O merch. No featured products today. But here's a teaser about the Smash Team. Smashomash.com slash Smash Team is our subscription services site. We replace Patreon with something superior, our own servers. So thanks to Smash Team members, consider becoming a member at the gold or silver level. If you would prefer to see additional content, that commonalities post right there is only for our gold Smash Team subscribers. Thanks most of all to our paid-up annual subscriptions. The best value. And we'll be back with some more videos momentarily with some more premieres. A meteorology segment has already premiered. Thanks for tuning in. Congratulations on realizing the channel exists. I've been your host, Dan, a.k.a. Smash Mash, signing off from the Smash News Network, least busted name in news.